Welcome to Hashtag Wednesdays Weekly, a weekly information session in collaboration with the Voluntary Sector and Public Sector Partners. This week, the host is Sue Smith and Terry Smith from Langley Community-led Housing and also Ali Crush from GMCVO. Over to you, Sue. Yeah, uh, thank you for attending today. Uh, my job title is Community Project Manager for Community-led Housing. Um, also today, like Hayley's just said, we've got Ali Cross from GMCVO and Terry Smith, who's with me, so let's give him a little wave. <laughs> um, from Langley Community, he's the chair of Langley Community Led Housing. Um, by the end of today's session, I'm hoping that you will all go away with a greater understanding of what exactly community led housing is. Um, on Langley, we are actually up to stage two. Um, with community-led housing. So obviously people are asking me now what, it, what is it about and how they get, can get involved or whether they can set one up in their own area. Um, so that's why I actually decided to, to deliver this session. Um, so I'm hoping that you can all understand what exactly community-led housing is by the end of this session. Um, so Terry Smith, is the chair of Langley Community Led Housing. So I'm going to introduce him now so he can give a talk on how he got involved and the hurdles he's done and how now, after all those hurdles, we can um, be able to support you if, if anybody's interested in, in what exactly it is. So over to Terry. Yeah, like I got involved years and years ago up on the Langley Estate when they decided to knock down 1,200 council houses. Uh, which are a lot of council houses, which wasn't available. Uh, they said they were providing uh, homes, which was affordable at the time. And they also, there was, there was a lot of council houses being sold off. And the idea was for that was to, every house they sold, they would build another council house. That never happened. In fact, they built one in all the years that every council house has been sold off. So I decided that we had to do something, I mean, for the people like who couldn't get into an house. So the, the, we had to start basically is where could we go, who could we speak to? So I went online, started looking online, started asking questions, started going to conferences up and down the country. Now this is the time when there was no council housing being built because no one was interested in council housing. There, wasn't, there, there was no interest in funding it. Nobody really wanted to know about it. But like as time went on, it came such a big issue that finally, over the last two or three years, they've started to realise that we need council housing built. And at the moment, there's quite a bit of money for council housing out there. They've got to know where to look and where to get involved. And I think the truth of it, of it is when the social, when what you call affordable housing came along, it, it, what you call, what was affordable housing? Well, it wasn't affordable housing for people who lived on Langley Estate which was 100,000 plus. And what happens with that is, a lot of them started then renting houses from these people who bought the homes and then they was, you know, a lot were landlords. So what happened was, people started paying rent for 500, six and a half, 100 pound a month. Well, you're on a minimum wage, or you're not in work, you've got issues. And the issues is something's got to give at the end of the month. And that's why there's a lot of food banks going on as well, because people haven't got the money to pay the rent. So what they do is they pay that rent, otherwise they have no home. And, and obviously like kids and families have to be it. Method saying that, all what happened wasn't all wrong. The state does look a lot better. So I'm not just knocking what's taken place. So a lot of new houses up here. You know, and a lot of the houses were knocked down, were abandoned and boarded up. But we believe they could have been, you know, brought back into the, you know, maybe like a pack of housing. From there, we, we realised we need to set up some form of like an housing in the community if we're going to take it forward. Because at that time, even then, there was still no real money for council housing. So again, we met with people, went down conferences up and down the country spoke to people and realised it could be done. Wouldn't be easy, 
but there was money like available. I mean, one of them, just one, was Old England. There was a large amount of money there, you know what I mean, like to be tapped into. But like always, there's always you know, like the hurdles as you're going along. We've got to that stage now, we're on the, you know I mean, like the second phase. And why I believe in it, just as much as council owns or social owns, whichever you wish to call them, is that you have a great to say when the community is involved in actually building the houses. You can look at what kind of equipment goes into these houses, the environment friendly things that can be done in these new houses. So, I mean, really, anyone like who's into housing, I mean, like of any sort, this is the way forward. And I think it's so important that you get people in the community involved in such a way, not just saying, have you got 20, 30 people? Because you need at least 15, 20 people who have something, expertise in what they have to give to start up that committee. So I don't want to dwell on too much because there's been, it hasn't all been nice. There's been lots of arguments over many years. There's been lots of disagreements. There's been lots of setbacks. But finally, the government are now releasing money for council housing. Thank God, because there's too many people suffered over the last 20 years. They've not had an home. They've lived in unaffordable homes. They've lived in homes where you won't put a cat and dog in. Thank God they've got hold of it all now and we are moving forward. We are on the second stage now. And I would like to pass that back to Susan because I don't want to get too much down the negative road. It's about partnership now. An individual can have a vision, but unless you have a partnership, that vision never happens. So the second stage is just as important as the first stage. In fact, maybe more important. Anyway, thanks for listening to me. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, thank you, Tara. Um, so the good thing is now you don't have to reinvent the wheel. Um, if you want to deliver your own community-led houses, and that means developing, planning, and delivering the project that you believe in is needed in your community. So I'm now going to hand over to Ali Crush from GMCBO, um, who I believe is going to do a presentation in how this can happen. So over to Ali. Hi. <clears throat> Hi everyone, I'm going to share my um, presentation with you, um, if that's all right, and then I'll start. Okay, can everyone see that? Yeah, yeah, we can see that. Okay. Um, so, um, I'm an investment officer at GMCVO, which is Greater Manchester Centre for Voluntary Organisation. We support the voluntary sector across Greater Manchester. I'm also a local coordinator for the Greater Manchester for Greater Manchester for the Resonance Community Developers Fund. And this is the fund that Terry and Sue uh, have been talking about. I'm also a recently accredited community-led housing advisor, as are um, Tom and Marie, who are on this uh, um, call on this meeting. Um, so I started working with Sue and Terry back in August, so it's, it was quite a long way into their journey of looking at community housing. Um, so I'm able to help them access feasibility funding and support for their project. Um, so I'm going to tell you a little bit about the fund that I can help people access my role on the project and um, then about community-led housing and the process. So let's see, yeah, it's working. Um, so the Resonance Community Development Fund, um, it's a 20 million pound fund uh, that's looking to invest in Greater Manchester um, over the next five years. And it's only kind of recently started. So we've got a few years left in it. Um, it can provide up to 100,000 feasibility funding and on average, three million to construct properties. It's for community-led housing, but also community-led sports facilities or a combination. And there's, um, they'd, like to be, they'd like there to be a strong um, environmental element to the properties as well, so that they're more sustainable, cheaper to run. 
Um, so Resonance are the fund managers. They're based down in the southwest and GMCVO are the local delivery partners for Greater Manchester. So my role, um, supporting organisations across Greater Manchester, um, is to basically handhold projects through the process, um, for the, the feasibility process, and to be a sounding board, to liaise with the funders resonance and to help the group access the funding in stages so as Sue and Terry said, they're now through to the second stage investment. Uh, they've received £5,000 initially um, and now another £25,000 from Resonance and also some match funding from um, Rochdale Borough Council. So I help the organisations connect with partners and specialists um, and tap into networks. So they could be uh, specialists like architects or solicitors uh, or people that can help um, develop the project in so many different ways. Um, on the Resonance Project, on the Langley Project as well, I'm also helping them to set up a community benefit society as the funds can only support community benefit societies, but it can support groups from their initial idea all the way through to construction um, and living in the projects. I'm also helping Sue. Sue's the project manager on the project and I'm giving her some project management uh, some, some support, uh, looking at the project planning, uh, the timing, getting the design team together, that sort of thing. Um, so, um, oops. So community-led housing. We've got two um, reasonable experts on the in the meeting so um, I'm sure they're going to correct me if I say something wrong here. <laughs> um, so community-led housing um, is generally um, created by local people to to fill a gap in the provision. Um, so whether that's like Langley they need more affordable properties I think they're, they're particularly looking for sort of larger houses like, or small bed houses. Um, but there's other projects that we're supporting, just to give you an idea, that are looking to develop accommodation for veterans, uh, people with dementia, elderly Asian people, refugees, local people who want to downsize, so freeing up big, bigger properties for other local people, and independent accommodation for young people or people with learning difficulties. So it's, it can be whatever it is that you want to be. There are also groups of people that are coming together that want to create a housing co-op. So they're creating properties for people that um, are very much involved in the development of the housing and they live in the housing or co-housing where people um, live in a more so supportive accommodation um, where they've got their own units, but they've also got shared eating space, growing space and car share and things like that. So it's a lot more supportive. So community led housing projects are often small scale. Langley, um, they have aspirations for creating hundreds of properties. I think that's right, because um, that's what they feel there is a need. Uh, but working with the local partners, um, Rochdale Borough Council Riverside Housing. Uh, we're looking to start by developing a site with 10 units to start with. Um, and they often use smaller sites that are difficult for mainstream housing providers to develop. Um, it's often, you're often looking at sites that don't stack up for other people, unfortunately. So it's not gonna be something where you're gonna generate a lot of income. The, um, purpose of developing the housing is to meet a need, not to generate a huge income. So projects are normally set up by um, local people. They run them, but as I say, it's key that you work with partners because they have access to resources and information um, and they can guide you and tell you what is and isn't feasible. But the group can also influence the partners to show them that, that there's a different way of delivering uh, the housing. Uh, it's essential that there's meaningful community engagement and consent throughout. So as Terry was saying, you need a lot of members on board 
um, local people and organisations who understand what the need are, who have that broad mix of uh, skills uh, to contribute towards the project. Um, you're also going to have to bring in external support because there'll be a lot of um, things that the organisation won't be able to do. And there's no point you trying to, for example, be an architect when there are specialists out there. Uh, you need specialist legal support um, for certain aspects of the project. Community-led housing is also creating genuinely affordable homes that are for rent, shared ownership um, or for sale. So, and it can be a mix of those. Um, schemes need to be able to meet the long-term housing need. So it's, it needs to be um, meeting the need for perpetuity. And the group, once they've developed and created the housing, in whatever way they're involved, uh, they'll need to own or manage it and steward it. So it's there long-term. The property is normally uh, developed by communities. It's not for profit. It's a lot of voluntary effort. Uh, that's why you need a lot of people on board. Um, but also there are a lot of opportunities for people to develop and to learn uh, new skills and to build that community um, cohesion. Um, so the process, uh, just briefly, um, and so let's see, um, there's obviously many different activities involved in developing community-led housing. It's like a capital project, but on a bigger scale. So developing like a community center or a playground, uh, but it's, it is on a bigger scale. Um, the process is more of a journey, so it doesn't develop in a straight line and you, you would have to start with a best guess and then gradually develop your plans as you get more information through. So you're not going to have all the answers at the beginning, you need to know what all the questions are as you're going along and you gradually build up your understanding and your awareness of what the opportunities are and what the constraints are. So it's something that evolves and grows. There'd be a lot of sort of going backwards and forwards. You need to make compromises um, and it can take time. So it's important for the group that's developing the project to keep people on board, to keep people informed and to show um, people and to track their um, progress and to celebrate progress. So the, the key activities are this kind of Four state, five stages. The group stage, the site stage, the plan, the build and the live phase. So the group stage is to develop and sustain the group and the key relationships. So that's setting up the organization, um, working out who the key partners are and how you're gonna work with those. <clears throat> the site stage is, um, Trying to find a site can be tricky sometimes, so you need to be very clear about it, what it is that you want to do. Um, what size site would you like? Where does it need to be near? Does it need to be shops, near shops, near public transport, near a particular community within like the Langley estate, near um, schools, that sort of thing. It depends on what kind of people you're, you're trying to provide the accommodation for. You need to investigate the site um do you searches and, and things like that to see that it how much it's going to cost whether it's appropriate uh, to develop that site the plan stage is is where where it all happens really so we're developing the business and the financial plan considering what funding sources you might be able to go for um how the properties will be allocated will they have to be taken from the local authorities uh, housing list or are like Langley, they're going to be able to specify that um, people have to have a strong connection to the Langley area. Um, maybe their families lived in the area for a good few years um, and they've had to move out maybe because they haven't had properties um, available for them to buy or to rent. Um, you have to also in the planning stage, you have to look at how you manage and sustain the properties. So once they've been built, having a look at how that can be managed, whether that's the group managers themselves or they look at another housing provider to manage them. And as we said before, engaging the community throughout the process is important. 
And this stage is um, looking at building the design team, creating the detailed designs um, and submitting planning permission. The next stage, the build phase. Um, this is something that has to be considered as you're working along as well. So how, how the properties are going to be built. Are you going to, is there going to be some element of self-build or are you going to commission contractors to build it? Um, do you want the contractors to uh, train and support local people to get involved in the construction? And the live phase is where you put all of your plan into action. Once the properties have been built, they'll have to be allocated, rented, repaired, maintained, looking at all the things like the complaints procedures um, and how you're going to work with the organisation that is going to manage the properties if it's not yourself. And looking at the governance of the group, the group needs to be, um, that manages the houses needs to be strong and constantly evolving. So bringing in new people so that it constantly reflect, reflects the needs of the community. Um, so I have a slide here, which, which we won't go through now because it's going through in too much detail, but I thought it'd be useful to have it um, on the presentation. This breaks down the group site plan, build and live phase in a little bit more detail. So you can have that um, on the presentation, either I'll share the slides um, or they can be as part of the recording. So next, so here's a, look, here's a couple of places where you can go for um, additional support. Um, so community-led homes, um, they've sort of created this five-stage process. So we, we've summarised that here. Um, and there's a lot of information and resources on their, on their site that's useful. Uh, the Greater Manchester Community-Led Housing Hub, um, which Tom is um, leading, Tom on this call, uh, they can provide a lot of support um, and advice on developing your project. So you can tap, tap into that as you're developing a project and see what support you can access. Um, my community uh, is another place that's got a lot of information on sort of community-led projects, capital building, and they've got a section on um, community-led housing and affordable housing projects. And um, GMCVO, um, we've got some details on our site about the Resonance Community Developers Fund. Um, something I didn't mention earlier is that it's social investment, so it's something that has to be paid back. Um, it's not a grant, but the idea is once you've developed the properties, you can then rent them out, you can then um, get a commercial mortgage and um, what we call refinance the property, so it's, it's easier to, to pay back residents. And then residents can invest that money in uh, another project. Um, we also have another small grant, um, which I might mention now if you don't mind. Um, it's 10 to 50,000 social investment for community projects um, within Greater Manchester. So you can find all that information on the GMCVO website. Um, so that's my presentation. Is that okay? Yeah, thank you, Ali. Absolutely brilliant. Um, everything's everything's as clear as day there. Um, so I'm going to try and share my screen with you so I can go through some of the stuff that I've put together as a community representative. Um, so bear with me. So we're, we're actually gone past all that now. So we're on to um, my role. So my role, so what, what's happened, like Holly said, we had to develop um, a community um, group that had lots of skills and um, just to get this started. So, so each member of the group will have their own different skills. <coughs> so that's exactly what we've done. Um, so we've, we've got 15 members of our community. Um, all of them have a, a vested interest in Langley. Um, then from that, from us developing, we've gone through first stage, what Alice just um, told you about. Now we're on to the second stage. So at the second stage, we needed a development manager, um, a community development manager. Um, 
So what the committee did was we all got together and we all had a meeting and then the committee decided that I would be, my role would be that um, community project manager. So I was recently elected to that role. Um, I have lots of things to do within that role, um, but taking into account that all the expertise that we've got on the committee, I'm not bogged down with all this stuff because I have expertise that I can tap into. Um, so my role is to consult with the community. That's my, my most important thing is keeping the community um, involved. Um, preparing a business plan based on what the community say they want. So community-led housing for Langlet, it's what that committee say that they want to be placed into that business plan. Um, preparing the lettings and allocation policy. Work alongside Alice to submit the next stage, which will be stage three. Oversee the budget, write a business plan, or prepare a business plan um, alongside the committee members. Prepare the lettings and allocations policy, and all the community great group meetings and liaise with the members in between the partnership meetings. To me, that's the most important thing, is our community representatives have to be kept up to date from day one and and right to the last minute so when we have our partnership meetings i will also have our community meet our, our community-led meetings to, to ensure that everybody's up to date and um, it's just so exciting to be a part of this i can't wait i can't actually wait to get into work um, we do have to enroll with partnerships so to, to deliver a community led partnership project well you, you will need to engage with other local partners especially your local planning department and housing association our partnerships at the minute are riverside housing association rochdale borough housing and rochdale planning department um, and so where are we up to now so the first meeting we had was way back in 2018 around june time I haven't got the precise date because at the time we was all sort of doing our own thing until we developed the committee. So that's about around the time when we actually looked at could we get involved in this. Um, so then once we've, we've engaged with re residents, um, we had to apply for the first stage of the funding. Um, once we've been successful with that and what entails that, we had to um, apply for the second round of funding. All this is all in partnership with Resonance. Not only in partnership, but they guide us and they tell us like what, what funding is available, whether we're at that point. Support network is so important. Um, so Ali's already shared the um, GMCVO websites and stuff, so I won't go, I won't do that again. So, um, so what is community-led housing? I mean, we've heard lots of stuff today, but to me, what it's about is local people playing a leading and lasting role in solving housing problems, creating genuinely affordable homes and stronger communities in ways that are difficult to achieve through mainstream housing. Um, it took us a while to be able to understand exactly what that was. Um, but like you say, if you say, if you keep that tight network with Renaissance, with the council, with all the other partners and the, and the committee, you get there. Um, it's, it's, not, it's not something that's not, it's not achievable because obviously we've done it. So if we can do it, others can do it. But community-led housing is providing hope to people who have housing need in their community. I mean, that's to me is the most important thing. Um, so um, I hope we're not, you, you know, I hope that you've um, you've gained something out of these sessions. So if you can, we'd like to set some questions. So if anybody's got any questions, 